Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel and also go to the playlist option and explore the earlier videos as well. Now, in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to learn about the evolution of settlement systems. It means we are going to look at how people evolved over time and how they created their habitats, settlements and several other constructions with time and what is the progression all about. So to learn this, first of all, please subscribe to our channel and then also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about it. So now let's discuss about the evolution of these settlements. So first of all, we need to understand one very important thing that the capacity for humans to drive this global change has evolved largely on several evolutionary legacy. And what are those legacies? Legacies of the social bonds, the abilities in technology, cognition factor and language. So remember these key words here, which are very important to understand in terms of the proliferation of technologies and creation of new settlements. It's very important to understand that how with technologies, with growing social bonds, with the creations of new kinds of languages across the globe, the evolution happened in accordance with these factors. So the legacy evolved from primate family, that is what we say is the prehistoric family, that is roughly 2.5 million year that is known as the Pleistocene in geological time scale. So we observe that Pleistocene was the cool phase that ended almost 11,700 before common era. So what happened during the prehistoric times or we say the primordial times, the primordial human ancestors began to develop cultures, right? The practices that they started to develop around themselves. So all these early cultures were organized around nomadic life and hunting and gathering as we know. So before we became actually settlers, before we created these settlements, we were more of hunter and gatherers. That is what is still now known. So if we want to understand about the progression, it's important to understand the prehistoric world first so that we come to the conclusion that how these settlements came into being. Before that, we were not settlers at one place, right? So human origins of settlement systems, we need to understand. And for that, we need to look into certain points. For example, it is widely accepted amongst the archaeologists, anthropologists and also geographers that the genus Homo, right, Homo sapiens that we say, evolved from several million years in Africa from ancestors who were part of the now extinct group that we observe. And what are they called? They are collectively known as Australopithecine, right? Australopithecus, if you have heard of it. So this is the image that you need to put in your head that this is the progression if you observe. And here is the advancement of Australopithecine race. And from here, Erectus, Sapiens and Solo Man and several other starts. Right. So this is something to be learned. Also to break one myth, which is very important here is that the idea that we came from or evolved from the apes is now broken apart by the science. So what does it say? Contrary to the popularized image of mankind arising from apes, the modern humans came from the apes. This is a theory which has been now proved wrong with further researches that Homo sapiens did not, I repeat, they did not evolve directly from the apes alive today. That's very important to understand. Now, why was this being said ever? Because chromosomal match, almost 90% of the DNA match was there. But because of this match, people thought that we came from the apes, we evolved from them. But this is not true. So what we observe, there was a segregation that is in gene pool around how many years ago? Six million years ago. Right. From there, human evolution separated while apes evolution separated. Right. So if two evolutions separated almost six million years ago, it means what the apes would have the common ancestry as of us, but they are not our direct ancestors. Now, why are we talking about evolutionary history here? We're talking because evolution of humankind is exactly related with the evolution of settlements. Why? Because then people felt the need to settle down at a particular place, right? So let's observe further the world map and understand the geographical patterns here. So we say peopling the world, right? So this is the peopling part of the world where 
people settled in different parts of the world in different times, right? If you observe here, this is thousand years ago, KYA units here. And what you observe, the African continent, if you observe this portion, 200,000 years ago, then 150,000 years ago, and then further 50, 45 Indian subcontinent was peopled 65,000 years ago, right? So what we observe here, this is the wave of migrations that started then, right? Now, to observe this, it's very interesting to understand the recent research that is about in 2017, our history shifted almost 1 lakh years when the skull from Morocco, remember this part of Africa here, the Morocco, right, became oldest known example of Homo sapiens. Before that, we thought that 195,000 year old record was found in Ethiopia, right? So we thought that Ethiopia was the place where the humans originated. But what happened now, because we found the fossils in Morocco as well, it means what? It means that one place was not, it means single place was not the cradle of humanity. It means life evolved at multiple places. So further, if you observe, this is the history that we include, the cultures that develop. So the names like Oldowan culture, Chakutian culture, Aurignacian cultures, these cultures developed and migrated in several parts of the world from Africa. So if you observe Africa, East Asia, Western Europe, these are the cultures that migrated, if you observe here carefully, right? Now, during later Pleistocene, when we say Pleistocene, it's very important to understand that it's about 2.5 million years ago till 12,000 years ago or before common era. This is the time period, right? So during this entire journey, these cultures settled in different parts of the world or traveled in different parts of the world. So you have so many names to remember here. You can look here. Aurignacian, you have Soltrian, you have Magdalenian, you have Natufanian, right? And the last one that you say is Natufanian is about 14,500 to 11,500 years ago. And we say that in Levant, that is east of Mediterranean region. Now here is when civilization starts and we say Mesopotamian civilization, the fertile crescent and Indus Valley civilization, Chinese civilization, Egyptian civilizations. These are the waves of civilizations that develop parallelly across the world. Right. So what happened? Why this migration could sustain? Because it was frozen world and there was land bridges between the continents. So people could migrate. But what happened after that? The bridges broke down because of the warming. Right. So Pleistocene ended and Holocene started geologically in time scale, if you know. So what happened? Because of warming, these land bridges were cut across. So people who got settled here got settled. Right. So they got separated. Now they started developing their own cultures out there. That's when the human settlers starts to come in after almost 10,000 before common era, 10,000 BC. So let's learn about this chronology in a little more detail, the timeline for human natural history. If you observe, this is almost 40 to 30 million years. That is the hominoids emerge from the genus Australopithecus, right? The earliest ones. Then further, if you observe, Homo habilis comes into the picture, right? The old stone age and Pleistocene begins around this 2.5 MYA, we say, right? That's where you observe the Australopithecine race further branching, old stone age coming. And then about 1.9 million years is Homo erectus. The word is erect. It means people started walking, right? They started standing tall. Now the theory is that they started walking because what happened? Earlier they were tree huggers, they were living on the branches, they came down, grasses evolved because of the rising temperatures, things changed on the planet, climate changed. So what happened? They started walking, they became Homo erectus, right? Then further, what happens is, from erectus, they gets into the Neanderthals, the Neanderthalus, right? And then further we observed the last glacial period where Ice Age begins is almost 1,10,000 before Christ. And from there to 50,000 before Common Era, we say what happened? The Cro-Magnon people, right? The Cro-Magnon people are the advent of the modern humans that we say, right? So this is when they started to migrate from East Africa. Right. And then further 40 to 30 and then further till 11,700 before common era, that is the end of Pleistocene. We say that the climate change was established and people felt the need to settle down at particular places. So climate change had a very important role because human beings were in sync with nature. 
So they started to develop the ideas of settling down at a particular place because now the resources became scarce because of climate change. The food was not easy to find. So they had to travel long distances. So people thought of it and they somehow discovered the art of agriculture around the same time that you observe the end of Pleistocene and the rise of Holocene. Right. So now the advent of permanent settlements is where we start our settlement geography from. So slow and gradual shift of Earth's climate led to the Pleistocene era's end and Holocene began. And during this time, the climate change led to new things, new developments in terms of the land use. Right. So what happens? The oldest remains that we find in the world of constructed dwellings. It is coming from the same time period, right? Almost from 15,000 before common era to 17,000 before common era, right? So that is where you find the Ohalo site and also the Sea of Galilee, that is freshwater lake in Israel. That is where we observe the Levant. So who were the people? Natufanians, if you observe, right? So this is the place where the first kinds of the settlers, the oldest Evidences are found. It does not mean that that is the only place where people settled in the first, but that is where the evidence, archaeological evidences have been collected from, right? So we observe further what? That these were the Natufanians people who settled around the east of Mediterranean, we say Levant, right? And this is where 10,000 BC, we have the evidences to support that invention of agriculture happened. Right. And further, we observe the Hessen Kif that is near Tigris River in southeastern Turkey. This is the one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements on the earth till now as per the science and scientific discoveries. So where is that place? If you observe, this is the place here, the Tigris River, right? The southeastern Turkey. So you observe what happens. This is what we say is Asia Minor and also the Fertile Crescent, the rise of Mesopotamian civilizations. Right. But there is no record which we say coming from Indus Valley or we coming from the other civilizations. But it does not mean that the other places where people settled did not develop agriculture. So there is a debate about that agriculture simultaneously developed at certain pockets across the planet. Right. So this is where evidences have been collected from. That's important to clarify. Now, evolution of human settlements can be understood in simple way by this flow diagram. So what you observe evolution of new subsistence mode here, life way mentalities and intensification of human environment interaction that we study in geography. So what happens in the beginning? There was the practice of some seed collection. Then further it developed and rudimentary food storage started. Then further animal domestication started and then further trade of domesticated animals and supplies of the food, the extra, the surplus comes in gradually and we observe the unicrop planting for surplus here. So this is where surplus led to the development of the different settlements which were called urban settlements of the first kind. So this is the progression if you observe in terms of evolution of settlements in just one picture. So you can pause the video and you can draw it for yourself. You observe the life way mentalities what changed. Necessary regional conditions has been given here. So look into the conditions, local climate, presence of domesticatable plants and animals, then ecologically diverse region and frequent interactions of human bands. This is what is we learn as the regional conditions that led into the flourishing and also the development of these settlements. And what about the life way mentalities, which is given here? What developed in terms of the thinking? This was hunter gatherer bands, which further evolved and thought of settling down. So they started agricultural conversions. The agricultural bands of people started to settle down and agricultural villages started to develop, right? So this is how the evolution of human settlements started and then the need for these settlements is to be understood in these points. Why it was needed? Because of the safety and security and also the food availability to protect themselves from the predators and enemies. They protect themselves from adverse weather conditions and also safeguard their food supplies and also domestic animals. These were the first kinds of thought process in terms of developing mentalities of people which led to creation of larger settlements. Right. So if you observe this particular diagram, the traditional mode of settlement growth, this is how the flow diagram can help us to understand what was happening. So this is what you observe as local environments constraint, the population growth, knowledge technology, intensification of production and desirable land and surplus production. 
And remember, the surplus is the most important concept that talks about the creation of urban settlements, right? The change of land use in rural areas, promoting the surplus and leading to further trade and developing the further settlements, right? So what do you observe? Stages of human settlements now. So the first stage, if you observe, is the primitive non-organized human settlement. Right, which we also know when primitive man, treetop branches, tree holes, caves, these were the dwellers, right? And this is Paleolithic, Old Stone Age, and further, the nomadic culture, temporary shelter people, Mesolithic, Middle Stone Age people, right? So this is the first kind of stage where we observe. Then what happens in the second stage? The farmers and herders start to develop. So this is in the New Stone Tool Age, Neolithic, New Stone Age. Right? The roof was usually made of timber beams and reeds covering them. Right? Then further, conflict between man winner became the king. Now there is the confirmation that formation of towns and cities started to take place. Right? The conquest, the power, the control over people, right? These things start to develop in the second phase, right? People started migrating to this town center for better wages and employments in the Bronze Age time. That is around 3000 BC to 4000 BC, right? And then what we observe is the third stage, the static urban settlements and cities, right? So what we observe here, due to excessive migration, formation of large towns and cities, development comes out in the front to accommodate more and more people giving rise to bigger settlements, right? The primacy starts to develop, which we will learn separately how primate cities developed, right? So Iron Age comes into the picture after the collapse of Bronze Age, right? So almost 1200 before Common Era, we observe that all the Bronze Age civilizations collapse and the New Age civilization starts to take up and this is also known as the Iron Age civilizations, right? Then further, the idea of the Factors that is influencing the decision making of human settlements, right? So what we observe? Physical factors and human factors. If we divide them, so flat land, fertile soil, forests, body of water and quality of life, employment, social networks, common language, religion, culture. These are the two parts of the factors which we will in separate video, coming video will be discussing it. Right? In details, we'll discuss the factors and how they influenced. So for now, you can in simple way also divide it into two other segments. That is the push factors and the pull factors that led to further development of the settlements. So what are these push and pull factors? Here is the list. Push factors are the services, safety, crime, then crop failure, drought, flood and poverty. Pull factors are employment, wealth, services, right? The attractive factors. So these are certain factors. But anyway, we are going to discuss in detail the factors in a separate video. And how does the settlement looks in today's world? So human settlements in present day, if you observe the hierarchy, we are going to discuss in lectures to come. Rural settlements, their characteristics, isolated dwelling, hamlet, villages, agricultural and pastoral practices. And the next is the urban settlement, right? So town, city, conurbation, mega city, megalopolis, metropolis, all these concepts came right so this is the modernity that we are talking about the human settlements in today's world so this is where the today's world is placed on the past knowledge to the present knowledge is what we learn as the evolution of human settlement so now when we have discussed in detail the various aspects of the evolution of settlement patterns across the globe in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on details of factors affecting these settlement patterns so please keep watching, keep sharing the videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All the best wishes.